stay in Luke, not Luke, Mark. Stay in Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. That's where we are going to camp our time together as we explore another story, narrative, that Jesus or the evangelist Mark has provided for us today. Last May 2021, my wife, Pao, was confined in the hospital due to low hemoglobin count brought by her uterine wall bleeding. She was transfused with a bag of blood and had a DNC procedure. And in those procedures, one of the ways we felt God's care was by providing nurses and staff, doctors, who gave extra care and attention to Pao's need. In Pao's words, it was like a staycation because of his extraordinary care we received. So we stayed in the hospital for two days, and uh, we thank God because they lived to their statement, which says, the hospital with a heart. Have you ever experienced an extraordinary care and attention lately. In the story that we're going to look at this morning, we're going to see the extraordinary care, love, and compassion of Jesus to ordinary men and women that brings hope out from despair. So together, let's behold the healing touch and grace of Jesus that brings salvation and resurrection. Turn to verse 21, and we're going, Mark is going to provide us the background of where the first scene of the story is going to take place. So we see there in verse 21 that Jesus uh, just returned to the Galilean side of the sea where he became known by the crowd, and perhaps it's in Capernaum. But I'd like you to take note of how Mark highlights the crowd. And, and this, this is like one of the characters, of thousands or probably hundreds of men and women who would always gather together with Jesus. They will hang out, hang out with Jesus, but they're just always amazed about the great works and powers that Jesus would actually unpack. But there is no desire for them to really follow. So take notice of that. Because in this story, we see two characters who were in great despair, who are hopeless, helpless. And regardless of their status in life and the money that they have in their bank during that time, those things can't help them. And we see first in verse 20 to 24 how Jesus cares for the cries of the distressed. How Jesus cares to the cries of the distressed. We are introduced now in verse 22 to a person named Jairus. According to Mark, he is one of the rulers of the synagogue. Now, he was a presiding, he's presiding the affairs of the synagogue, including organizing and teaching in services. So perhaps at this time, you can just call Jairus a ad, church administrator. So Jairus is not a teacher, but he knows all around what's taking place in the synagogue. He prepares it, and when everything is done in the synagogue, he's also there to make sure that everything is in right place. He is a man of distinction. He is a man with respect and a right standing before the eyes of men and women. But Jairus, with, with much distinction and respect, came to Jesus with the pressing need. Take a look at verse 22. And seeing him, which tells us that he was patiently waiting for Jesus, he fell at his feet, verse 23, and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come 
and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Jairus was patiently waiting for Jesus. He probably heard about the news of what Jesus can do, the miracles and the signs and the healings that Jesus already provided in Capernaum. And if you're that person desperate for something, you would seize that moment. Now, what's the need? His daughter was severely sick. His daughter was severely sick to the point that she was dying. Now, a good father, a good father, if you run out of resources, for example, how to get healing for your kid or your child, you're going in desperate mode. And Jairus was in desperate mode at this very moment. Seeing him, he was patiently waiting. He heard about what Jesus can do, and he was anticipating for his arrival. And consider this scene, how trouble or difficulties can make us vulnerable. A man with distinction, a man with such respect, a man with great standing in the society, now pleading, coming to Jesus. See how trouble and difficult situations can remind us that we are not fully in control. But God in his providence, he uses desperate moments like this to turn our hearts to him. To turn our hearts to him. So when we say that Jesus cares to the cries of the distressed, here's something that we'd love also to see in the scripture. We can come to Jesus with our requests by faith. Let me say that again. We can come to Jesus with our requests by faith. Now, take a look again to verse 23 or verse 22. We see there the words fell at Jesus' feet. Would mean that Jairus was already actually worshiping Jesus. Fell at Jesus' feet would also mean that he acknowledged the worthiness that Jesus is deserving of his praise. But also consider the request of Jairus to Jesus. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Hear the words of Jairus. The cries of a father who's in despair. The cry of someone who is in great desperation. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Church, by, by faith, you see here that Jairus understood that with the touch, the healing touch of Jesus can provide renewal, vitality, and restoration to the physical body of his dying daughter. Have you ever... Have you ever came to a point of your desperation? That your resources didn't work, that your connections didn't work, that the only hope that you have right now is someone who's greater than you. Jairus was in this situation. But by faith, you see in the very words of Jairus, he was sold out to coming, seeing, and experiencing Jesus. Friends, this is the first time that Jairus saw Jesus. This is the first time that he had an encounter with him. So take a look at verse 24. And he went with him. Now, that sentence is packed with many things. You know, because when Jesus, remember that Jesus in Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to uh, 20, he just finished another ministry where he liberated, he provided redemption to a demon-possessed man okay, uh, in, in the Gerasenes, and now he's back for ministry. He, they have probably scheduled something in this day. But 
Jesus responds to the cries of the distressed, and he went with him. Notice how Jesus is able to lay down any schedule that he might have during that time and just to focus on this one individual to provide care, love, and provide healing touch. Not only to, the, to her daughter, but also to the heart of Jairus. And he went with him and a great crowd followed him and pressed him. So see the crowd here. So they are always enamored with what Jesus can do, and they are following. So it's like the crowd is going to create a stampede, hundreds or thousands probably, and they are excited to see. Here we go. Let's, let's, let's just go with Jesus and together with his disciples. He's going to do something. But keep in mind later on that Jesus is not just interested of men and women just simply who are concerned about what he can do. But his desire is for the people to see for who he really is. And he went with him and a great crowd followed him and pressing him. And now take a look at verse 24 to 34, 25 to 34. Because on their way to Jairus' home, Jesus experienced a detour. They're heading towards the house of Jairus so that Jesus can lay down, can, can lay hands on, on uh, Jairus' daughter so that she can be healed. And probably Jairus was excited and he was ready, okay, together with his disciples. They were uh, 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 setting their way already to their home. Then a detour took place. Verse 25, we see a woman in the crowd, woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. In our context right now, the woman perhaps had an abnormal uterine bleeding for 12 years. Wow. Verse 26, and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Now, consider the kind of disease this woman experienced. The woman consulted every doctor in Capernaum, in Galilee, taking every medication needed to the point that she lost her income and her livelihood. Here's the detour that Jesus is going to encounter. And her hope of getting well and being cured got worse. Not only that, but the woman was in great despair because she carried this for 12 years all by herself. Quickly turn to Leviticus chapter 15, verse 25 to 27. We're going to see a ceremonial law provided to the Jews. Leviticus chapter 15, 25 to 27 the Word of God says, If a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, not at the time of her mens menstrual impurity, or if she has a discharge beyond the time of her impurity, all the days of the discharge she shall continue in uncleanliness. As in the days of her impurity, she'll, she'll be unclean. Every bed on which she lies, all the days of her discharge, shall be to her as the bed of her impurity. And everything on which she sits shall be unclean, as in the uncleanliness of her menstrual impurity. And whoever sits shall be unclean, as in the uncleanliness of her menstrual impurity. Sorry. And whoever touches these things shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. Now, you know how complex this ceremonial law is and how it actually brought isolation to this woman. Now, keep in mind that this ceremonial law would, is simply provided to the, to the Jews for them to understand what it looks like for us to, con, to, to meet a holy God. But somehow, 
how people have perceived this in the time of Jesus provided great despair for this woman. John MacArthur, in his commentary in this text, he said, an unclean, defiled woman couldn't go to the synagogue for 12 years. Couldn't go to the temple. She was an outcast for 12 years. If she touched her husband, she, he, was un, he was unclean. If she touched her children, they were unclean. If she touched her friends, they were unclean. If she touched a stranger, he was unclean. What was life like for her? For her, there was no way to become ceremonially clean for 12 years. This is the kind of detour that Jesus experienced. But what can we learn from this scene? Verse 27. We can come to Jesus in our suffering by faith. We can come to Jesus in our suffering by faith. Why? Because Jesus responds to the pain of the deceased. Take a look at the next few verses. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Okay? Now, the woman had a little understanding of who Jesus was, but she had faith. She had faith. In, In Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, we can see there that the woman touched the tassel of Jesus' robe. And a tassel marks someone who belongs to God. So probably that was the woman's uh, uh, idea or sign to actually reach out for Jesus. But notice the woman's faith, synonymous to Jairus, verse 28. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. Jairus' plea to Jesus is to lay his hand to her daughter so that his daughter will will be well. But for this woman, if I can simply touch a tip of his clothing, I will be healed. The word touch there means to cling, to grasp, to hold on to. This woman was in great despair for 12 years. And he touched the tassel of the garment of Jesus. In verse 29, take a look at what happened. And immediately, just the touching of the garment of Jesus, see the power of Christ. Immediately, the flow of blood dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease instantly church the woman's abnormal uterine bleeding for 12 years stopped amen the woman was instantly healed by the power of jesus magic didn't do it doctors didn't do it medicines didn't do it jesus See the faith of this woman. And in verse 30, And Jesus, perceiving in in himself the power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? It could be phrased into this, Who are you who touched my garment? Now, that is actually not a good question because in verse 31, And his disciples said to him, Well, Jesus, you see the crowd, thousands and hundreds, pressing around you, and yet you say, who touched me? (laughs) And he looked around to see who had done it. Now, the word power, because Jesus said, uh, 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 Mark said, perceiving in himself the power had gone out from him. That is, in the original language in Greek, it is synonymous with the word dynamite. So a power came out from Jesus. He felt it in his human body. So he knew that something took place. 
But please keep in mind that when Jesus asked this question, that doesn't mean that he doesn't know who that person who touched him. In his sovereignty, in his, in his power, there is a reason why he uttered that question. Who touched my garment? He is pursuing the woman. He is pursuing the sinner. And this detour that Jesus had, he's come to pursue, to seek and save. And here we see the loving care of Jesus. Because women, women that time are not that valued. How much more for someone who, who've, been, who've been discharging blood for 12 years? And also, when Jesus asked the question, who touched my garments? Listen to this. Jesus wants to show, especially to the crowd who were persistently following him, what it looks like for someone to be a Jesus follower to him. The crowds were there. But there's one. Actually, two. Jairus is one. Later on, we're going to see more. But this woman in this detour had faith. Remember Matthew 17, verse 20. If you have faith like a grain of mustard, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. The woman had faith, a single faith of hope. If I can touch Jesus' garment, I will be healed. Then when she touched it, then the blood immediately dried up. Or oh, feel the kind of relief that woman experienced that time. In verse 33, But the woman, knowing what happened to her, came in fear and trembling. Now, other commentators would say that this, this woman was afraid somehow to, to expose herself to Jesus. But, but please consider that someone who has just experienced a great healing from someone where he had faith on, this is not just ordinary fear. This is holy fear. Came in fear and trembling and fell down before him the woman started to worship Jesus and told him the whole truth. So the woman had holy fear, respect, and reverence because of what Jesus showed to her. Because she experienced hope in her despair and in turn to worshiping Jesus. Her faith led her to truly believing in him. Now in verse 34, take a look. The words of Jesus and he said to her, daughter, let's just pause there. Jesus doesn't know this woman, the first time encounter in this detour, but Jesus called her daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Now, what can we learn from verse 34? Jesus didn't only heal her physically. He called her daughter, which means Jesus extended her healing spiritually by bringing her into the kingdom. Daughter. Jesus called her daughter. She became a child of God, not of anything she has done, but only by faith. It's by believing and receiving Jesus. Remember, remember John chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. But to all who did receive him, that's what happened to the woman, who believed in his name, that, hap that, that also happened to the woman. He gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, this detour is not a coincidence. Jesus planned it. It's part of the plan. Not to only show the crowd who he really is, but for 
Jesus to extend care and loving kindness to this woman who was deceased for 12 years. See how Jesus responds to the pain of this woman. God used the faith of the woman to direct her attention that, that, that the way for her to be healed is not on her. The way to be healed is not on what others can provide or the world, but only Jesus. That narrows now all her attention to Christ. From despair to hope. And Jesus didn't only heal her physically and spiritually, but also socially. Now, think with me. She can now have fellowship with other Jews. She can now go and visit the synagogue and hear God's word proclaimed. Jesus didn't simply heal her. Jesus, Jesus showed to her what salvation looks like in God's kingdom. You think about what this woman will do in the synagogue in the first day that she tap, stepped on it. She can hear the Torah. See the power of God. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. De Jesus then simply healed the discharge of blood for her. Jesus also healed her heart. She is now united with God in Christ. Now, a little side note. Now, just what just happened to this woman? Uh, we thank God now for the advance of medicines and technologies that is used to treat different kinds of diseases. And consider these means as means of grace to provide healing. And we thank God for doctors, Dr. Ed. We thank God for nurses who are here caring for us. We thank God for the advanced uh, medications and treatments that we have right now. But let's not forget to center the object of our faith in Christ. And that's what happened to the woman. Trust that he is sovereign and dependable as we come to him in our suffering. Church, are you in deep pain right now? You can come to him. You know, it's a great joy to see Tita Pearly Rulon this week. She came to the church and visited us. And uh, Pao and I are just hearing stories about how God has provided healing uh, to her. And she said that she has a few more chemos, and after that, they're praying for the next steps. And, and while she's giving testimony, she's like, praise the Lord. See, a woman who's experiencing healing, probably not complete, but her faith is not centered on what the treatments can provide. She said, I am joyful today. Well, that kind of detour strengthens your faith to more and more focus your heart on Christ. Jesus responds to the pain of the disease. Jesus hears the cry of those who are distressed. Have you experienced this lately? Friends, I pray that, that, that you will see that the things that God is providing to us in our midst are not accidents. Even this kind of detour, not planned, not scheduled, not in the itinerary of Peter, probably is the one who's preparing all the schedules for Jesus. But this woman experienced the loving care and kindness of Christ. 
So we continue to pray to those men and women in our church who are sick. But we also pray that their eyes will be centered on Christ. We pray and ask for God's mercy to heal them. And ultimately, that Christ will be treasured in their hearts. Then we continue in verse 35. So this woman started to tell everything to Jesus. And you think about all this scene. When, when the woman started to tell about her story, it's, more, it's not just like five minutes. And keep in mind, what's the first scene that we, 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 we saw here? Jairus asked Jesus to go to their house and lay hands on his daughter to be healed. And think about Jairus. With the conversation that Jesus is ha- having during that time with the woman, he was probably anxious. Then verse 35, while he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Jairus was seeking for hope out of his despair. Then the messengers right now sent a news of despair. Perhaps what could have been Jairus' initial reaction? Think with me. Perhaps he could be angry towards Jesus because they were late. Perhaps he can blame Jesus because of the malpractice he did. Someone was dying and they stopped in the road and listened to the story of a woman. Perhaps he was anxious. How can this now happen? But look at verse 36. And in the remaining verses, we see that Jesus is Lord over sickness, death, and life. Jesus is Lord over sickness, death, and life. 36. But overhearing, in other translation, but ignoring what they said, the messengers, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, do not fear, only believe. Now, in the original language, the words of Jesus could mean stop fearing, keep on believing. Replace your fear with faith. And Jesus was gracious to remind Jairus. Jesus was gracious to redirect the eyes of the heart of Jairus to him. Don't listen to your messengers. Ignore them. I'm not yet done. And it's like the messengers were telling Jesus, you're late. The daughter, her, his daughter already died. But Jesus doesn't operate on our own timeline because something is going to happen here. Jesus is Lord over sickness, death, and life. And when you hear the words of Jesus, do not fear, only believe, we can learn that we can trust the very words and promises of Christ to you and me. We can trust Him 100%. Take a look at verse 37. And He allowed no one to follow Him except Peter and James and John and the brother of James. Now, this is the first time that Jesus started to isolate some of His core disciples. Verse 38, They came to the house of the ruler, of the synagogue and Jesus saw a commotion so they are already in place to you know to weep and wailing loudly now in the time of Jesus you know they have also paid weepers okay in verse 39 and when he had entered he said to them why are you making a commotion and weeping the child is not dead but sleeping And verse 40, and they laughed at him. And they laughed at him. See the hearts of the skeptics. 
the hearts of those part of the crowd. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. In verse 41, taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi. Chairus said, Jesus, come. My little girl is sick. Jesus said, little girl, I say to you, arise. Now, here's another thing you need to consider. When Jesus took the hand of the little girl, if that girl was already dead, she was actually proclaimed dead, declared dead. Ceremonially, the person who would touch a dead body also serves unclean. But here's what took place. An unclean body did not actually affect him. Why? Because Jesus is Lord over sickness, death, and life. And instead of being, oh, I don't want to touch the dead body, but for Jesus, the same care, affection, and love that he showed the woman in his detour is the same kind of affection he is showing this little girl. Taking her by hand, he said to her, Talitha, kumi. In other translation, it means, honey, it's time to get up. Arise. Jesus provided life. He showed that in the midst of despair, there is true hope in him. Jesus holds our hand to bring our despair to true hope. Friends, are you in despair this morning? Are you distressed? May that circumstance narrow your focus to fix your eyes on him. And here's what Jesus can do. He can take you by the hand. And he can provide renewal within you. Verse 42, and immediately the girl got up and began walking. She was 12 years of age and there were immediately overcome with amazement. Of course, you see someone rising from the dead. And verse 43, and he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat from despair to hope. And see this, Jairus simply came to Jesus for cure, for healing, but he got resurrection for his daughter. See the power of Christ. Tim Keller, in his commentary in this text, he said, when you go to Jesus for help, you get from him far more than you had in mind. But when you go to Jesus for help, you also end up giving to him far more than you expected to give. See what Jairus Experience and received by faith. G Jairus saw that Jesus is not just a healer. He's not just a miracle worker, but he is Lord. And when the Word of God declares that Jesus is Lord, it means that he is King, Master. And how, we sh how should we respond? We submit. The two responses of, of, of this two character, Jairus, and at the same time, the woman, they fell down. They worship Jesus. That kind of acknowledgement brings our hearts to worship. Friends in Christ, we receive the hope of salvation and hope of resurrection. 
And these are the realities that Christ purchased for us on the cross. Salvation. He suffered and died on the cross so we can experience life. The power was taken out from him when he was on the cross. So that we can experience life today. Resurrection. He experienced death so that we can live with him forever. And this is, this is all in Christ. Now, you co- compare, compare the crowd to Jairus and the woman. The crowds would follow Jesus over and over again, but they are just there to be amazed. But no decision to actually follow Christ. But Jairus, the woman who got healed, had faith and experience, a life that changed their lives for the rest of their existence. Is Jesus Lord of your life. Our prayer is that you will not just be enamored by what Jesus can bring to you, but you will be amazed and your hearts will be so in high because of who Christ is and what he can bring to your life. How about you? Do you have salvation? Do you have resurrection when Christ comes? May the circumstance that we have today narrow our focus to see Christ for who he is. And maybe you're here, you're watching in the live stream, you never trusted in Jesus. Don't be the crowd. See the very works of Christ and let it direct you to him. And may you experience repentance and faith, placing your whole trust and life in him. And if you're a believer, if you're a believer and and this story doesn't stir something in your heart, I pray that you'll, I pray that you'll not lose all of what Christ can do, but ultimately on who he is. He's Lord over sickness, death, and life. Yes, he is Lord, but he also cares to the cries of the distress. Yes, he is Lord, but he also responds to the pain of the deceased. May the Holy Spirit provide faith, and may it narrow our focus on him alone. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. Lord, teach our hearts not, Lord, to lose the awe, Lord, of knowing you as Lord quicken, stir, awaken sleeping hearts today, that it will narrow, Lord, our focus, the eyes of our hearts, the affections of our hearts to who Jesus is. Help us. We need you. We need you. In Christ I pray.